Hello everyone. In this video, we'll cover some changes to uh, implement it in the Grid 2.0. Uh, so if you do not know the system yet, uh, you should check out the how to play video for original Grid Wars that you can find in the description below. Uh, once you are, will be equipped with this knowledge, you will have uh, a better time understanding everything we will cover today. Hello everyone. Grid Wars have returned with a 2.0 update. Today, we are finally ready to implement all the changes that have been in development to make the game faster, more enjoyable and more thrilling. But first, before I talk about the changes, I would like to invite you all to check out our ongoing live campaigns for the Grid Wars 2.0 on Kickstarter and on my mini factory Frontiers. You can find the links in the descriptions below. So, right away, when you will look at the new unit cards for Grid Wars, you will notice all the colors, because all the profiles have been color coded to match different skills. Uh, what you will also notice right at the beginning is that there is no big statistic box at the middle of the card. Uh, we have removed many statistics that weren't commonly used and divided them into two sections, one for primary statistics and one for the tech statistics. Let's start from the top with the primary statistic. Uh, the first one is melee mastery and the second one is ranged mastery. You can notice that there is no special weapons mastery uh, as all special weapon attacks were divided into either melee uh, or ranged attacks. Uh, you can also notice that the values of uh, range and melee statistic are quite lower. Uh, previously they were between 3 to 5 and now they are, uh, they are from 0 to uh, to four or five, uh, because we have changed entirely the system in which you are changing your mastery results to hits into attacks. This is quite exciting because it is pretty much uh, simplified and you can just focus on, on generating hits. Uh, the new system um, works in a way that you just simply change one mastery result into a hit for each point in your statistic. So if you are using a melee attack, you are checking the melee mastery statistic, and if it's ranged, you check the ranged mastery. Up next, we have movement statistic, which generally remained intact. You can still just move the number of hexes that is indicated by your move statistic during your move action. Uh, the only change regards charging. And now charging is affected by your movement statistic, and if it's uh, higher than four, with four being like the baseline, for each point over four, you will get one additional hex when you roll a charge die for and establish the charge's distance. So now the sur survivability, so the, your health and the armor of your units, which remain the same with one small tweak to the health statistic. Um, on the previous cards, you could find a, a build statistic that was used when the units were being thrown. You were comparing the two statistics and the one with the higher uh, build could throw the smaller enemy. Uh, in order to keep everything clean, we have connected the build statistic with the health statistic and your max HP is now used when you are throwing enemies. Mm. The action statistic is also no longer on the cards and each unit receives two actions when they are activated. If a unit is intended to have more actions in a round, it will be uh, covered in their rules. Moving on to the left side of the card, there are three tech statistics and the first one is engineering. Uh, the engineering has received a major overhaul uh, it, it is no longer a test statistics, statistic, but rather uh, the value in the en engineering uh, indicates how many material tokens a unit receives at the beginning of the game. During the battle, an engineer can spend these materials to uh, perform certain engineering projects. Uh, there is a small list of engineering projects in the rulebook and also they can be found on the unit card in silver panels. Up next is the hacking statistic. We are big fans of hacking here at Grid Wars, and our goal was to put it on par with actual physical combat damage. Uh, so the first step we have taken uh, was to double its power and uh, actually allow a hacker to perform two hacks in a single action. Uh, the hacks are uh, resolved in the same way as in original Grid Wars. You perform a hacking test, you roll 2d6 dice, you choose the higher result, add your hacking statistic, and if the sum is equal to or higher than the hack's difficulty, the test is passed and the effects are resolved. Um, there are still direct hacks and net hacks. And net hacks can be used when a unit is standing next to a terminal, and direct hacks 
are a bit different, they can be used at any time, but their difficulty is increased by the target's IDS statistic, which is the first statistic you will find in the text statistic box. There are no longer minor hacks or major hacks. You can also use net hacking and direct hacking interchangeably uh, in a single hacking action. Uh, the, 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 the large change was to actually also reduce the number of hacks that are listed in the rulebook. Just keep them concise and easy to remember and always available. And this variety and diversity of hacking was rather transferred to unit cards. And you can find personal hacks of some units on the unit cards as blue profiles. Now that we have the card covered, the changes on the unit cards, uh, there are also some changes to the actual gameplay on the grid. And the first big change that I think you will really like and that makes everything play smoothly and the gameplay more enjoyable is change to the visibility. In the original Grid Wars, um, the arc of sight of each unit was a bit clunky. There were problems with, um, with repositioning the units on the hexes and uh, having them see other enemies. You weren't always sure if it's correct, if you should just take him a bit to the right or to the left for him to actually see things. And that's why we have decided to simplify it. And now the arc of sight extends from all the edges of the unit's half front. So both, both, uh, both left and right edge extends to the end of the grid and all hexes in between are just visible. So you'll have no problem with deciding if your unit actually sees an enemy. Uh, the aiming spot, so this characteristic dent in the front of each Grid Wars unit is still there. It is still used to lock enemies in combat, but you will no longer need to use the aiming tool in order to establish if the units defending from your ranged attacks have cover. We have replaced the whole cover mechanic with much simpler rules, and there are actually now three situations in which a unit has cover. The first one is when units are in combat, so every unit in combat has cover, uh, also, friendly fire penalty still applies that might damage your allies that are in combat with the enemy. The second one is a brand new mechanic for cover, which is called proximity cover. This is something that we have designed to make cover uh, simple and easy to use, but also uh, feel good. Um, it works in a way, it only works when, when your unit, when the defending unit is adjacent to another ally or, or terrain. So this is the first step to check if it's possible to have proximity cover. Uh, and the second step is to draw a path between the attacking unit and the defending unit and identify the shortest line between them. Uh, there will likely be multiple shortest paths between them if there is a long range attack. Uh, but if any of these lines goes through the hex that is adjacent to the defending unit that has the ally or the terrain on it, then the defending unit gets the proximity cover. And cover terrain actually blends with the last piece of improvement that we would like to present to you today, uh, which is generally the terrain from the grid. We have received a lot of feedback from Google's players regarding the construction of the grid, and uh, we have heard your voices, and we have uh, made some changes to make the terrain easier to set up and give you more options instead of just large buildings. Uh, so in the terrain pack, uh, in the campaign, you will receive on top of the cover terrain uh, some fixed pieces of barriers that are easy to print and you can just place them anywhere on the grid to have uh, some nice hiding spots and some good strategic points. Uh, so this is convenient if you just want to print them and have them ready and put them on the battlefield. And the last part is modular terrain system, which we're actually very excited about. Uh, it is greatly designed, it doesn't have many pieces, it is easy to connect, and generally the idea behind it is that you can build any grid that you want. You don't need to print large pieces, everything connects, sticks inside, and you can shape and form uh, the grid uh, into, your, into your design, into your imagination. There are, of course, some uh, pre-built uh, samples that you can just construct some, some simple buildings, but once you do it, you will see that there is actually no limit in what, what, what you can build, build and where you can play. So we invite you to check uh, for more changes, more smaller tweaks. This is just the general idea of the things that we are most excited about. But in the room, you will find some, uh, some more small things that you will enjoy, you will find out, and you will hopefully implement in your battles.
Be sure to check out the campaigns. They are now live, maybe not anymore when you are watching this, but the links are in the description below. Uh, and uh, yeah, see you on the grid. Uh, let us know what you think and uh, stay cyber.